peace y'all it's your girl eld and i'm back with another video i didn't know if i was going to get to this today because i had a lot of stuff going on with my son but i wanted to jump on here and share i guess some thoughts that i've been having the last couple days um this is low-key turning into like a book review thing but i've just been reading a lot more so i have lots of thoughts okay and i'm going to be talking a little bit low because my son is having a nap um but I want to share some thoughts with y'all, okay? So, I've been reading this book. It's like extremely popular and a lot of you may have read it. It's called The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. I think that's how you pronounce it. This book is so profound. Like the things that he's explaining is so simple, yet it's so almost hard for me to grasp, okay? I am a person who lives in my mind a lot and a lot of times I get really down on myself because I'm thinking about the past, whether it's past mistakes that I made or even happy memories that I have um, and I just kind of replay them over and over and over again in my mind or the opposite, I'm looking to the future like, <sighs> when's this going to happen, when's that going to happen, what if this happened, like the what ifs, oh my god, they're limitless okay so we picked up this book at barnes and noble um the same day that i had got the sister soldier book and i finished the sister soldier book in like two days so i'm like let me just pick up this book and just see what it's saying one thing that stood out to me a lot was how um he was saying that when you start so for those who don't know this book is all about talking about Sorry, this book is all about how you can practice being present in any given moment. And he's basically saying that by being present, you eliminate pain and suffering because you're not focused on the past. You're not focusing on the future. Actually, one thing that he says is that the past and the future do not exist. They're just former nows or nows that have not happened yet. And therefore, they don't exist in this present moment. So all we really have is this present moment. And I 100% agree with that. But the practice of being present in the moment of observing your thoughts, you know, similar to what you do in meditation of observing your thoughts versus, I guess, like consuming them or being run by them in a sense, versus just accepting the now and what is in the present moment even so much as not being consumed by your emotions being able to feel the emotion because emotion shows up in the body feel the emotion and just allow it just let it go not be attached to it i find that so freaking hard like being an overthinker and trying to be present on top of that he also talks about how when you do begin to practice because I have been practicing it but it's been coming in like short belts like I'll be in the moment and then my mind starts drifting and then I have to remind myself like there's only this present moment so come back to this present moment right but he talks about how when you're doing that it's almost like a threat to your ego. So the ego focuses on the past and the present. If I'm explaining this correctly, I hope I am. He says that the ego focuses on the past and the present. So when you are sorry, the past and the future. So when you're being present, the ego's like, what the hell is happening? Like, get me out of here, basically. So the ego tries to pull those past and future experiences back in and take you out of the present. And in doing that, um, it could show up as pain in the body. It could show up as a headache. It could show up as, you know, you start to feel sick. You start to have like even cold symptoms. And it's crazy because as I was trying to practice being present last night, I was like fighting off thoughts that did not serve me in the moment, if I'm being completely honest. And then I felt myself getting this crazy headache. And I remember him saying that in the book, like, and I'm just like, dang, he's really hitting on things that are actively happening in my life. So 
I'm trying my best to be a what's he what he calls a silent witness or a silent watcher, observer, whatever of your thoughts. And it's so it's so hard, yo. Like I'm a stay home mom currently, and I be home with my son. <clears throat> and my son, you know, he's he's uh, he just turned one a few months ago, so he's really like kind of learning his independence but he's still very much like pick me up pay attention to me and sometimes it's just like bruh like I just want to be alone in my thought (laughs) in my own I guess energy even if I'm not doing anything in particular but in doing so like sometimes those be the times that I just get lost in my head and like I start thinking about my older two children and then I just get real sad and real down and I don't want to be in that space either so again I'm constantly trying to bring myself back to the present but it's so freaking hard y'all like it's so hard I don't even know Well, I shouldn't say I don't know, because I do know. I do know where my mind goes. And I kind of understand why it goes that way. But the practice of being in the now, the you know, the book is called The Power of Now. There is so much power in it. Like, I can completely understand that when I'm in the present moment, like, I'm good. Like... He says that there's joy in the present moment. And I don't know, I kind of understand joy as like almost an enthusiastic experience. So it's not necessarily that. But when I'm able to practice being present, I really just be chilling. Like, my life is pretty good. But it's in those moments where my thoughts wander to anything outside of the present that I'm like, what the fuck? (laughs) Like... I don't know if this um, this video doesn't have much structure um, like the other videos that I have posted or I have planned but I wanted to I guess just share this space that I'm in to show people that like shit ain't all glitz and glamour all the time shit ain't all oh like welcome to my channel like no (laughs) it's very much not that um even now as I was like my son was sleeping and I was laying in the bed and I'm like oh like I should record a video as soon as like almost as soon as I had that thought I'm not even kidding my son woke up and I'm like damn I guess I'm not recording a video but I breastfed him and he went back to sleep pretty quickly so I'm like okay Bakia this is the moment don't talk yourself out of it just record a video but then the thoughts came running in like oh what am i gonna wear what am i gonna talk about um i don't want to get caught up in eckhart Tolle talks about how i guess detrimental it could be to constantly revisit the past like he talks about how there's not really a point in doing that unless it's for like a specific person purpose to where you could do it and then let it go a lot of my work um having been in like the community services field has been about talking about my past experiences oh this is the thing okay this one this is a good one so he talks about how we over identify with our past experiences to where we think that if we do not identify with the past experiences then who are we and i've struggled with like the way he put that in words was just chef's kiss but i've struggled with that especially being an author and sharing my um experiences in that way I have struggled with that thought of like, well, if I'm not this, then who am I? And even since becoming a mom, like I couldn't really wrap my head around the fact that like, oh, I'm just a mom now. It was like, well, what else am I? Because this is now my role, like 24 seven, three, six, five for the next, the rest of my life essentially, right? I'm like, who am I then? 
And I really struggle with that until, and I guess I still struggle with it, but as I'm reading this book, it's really putting into perspective that like, I am me outside of my titles, outside of career, outside of um, finances, outside of friendships, outside of relationships. Like I'm still me without all these labels. I'm still me without attaching myself to all the thoughts that be spiraling, spiraling in my head about the past or anticipating the future, okay? And it's such a hard concept to grasp. It's like constant, <laughs> it's like constant affirming that I am who I am and who I am in this moment is valuable and it is enough despite any outside external thing. Like, that's so hard for me to grasp. <laughs> oh, that's so, excuse me, that's so hard for me to grasp. But it's something that I want to work on. Um, I will definitely have to revisit. I keep looking over because I have the book right here. Um, but I will constantly have to revisit and remind myself that I am who I am. Who I am is valuable. My value is not attached to anything outside of myself. I have value just because I am who I am. And then he also talks about that, uh, you know, the two most powerful words um, that a, a human could speak is I am, because you know what you follow after that is, it could be limitless, it could be limitless, it really, um, it really could be followed up by anything that you desire for it to be followed up with. The issue is, I guess, from my perspective, is that when you don't associate yourself with the past and you don't anticipate the future, what comes after the I am if you're not linked to the outside, the things on the outside of yourself? Like That's, that's a real head scratcher for me, y'all. <laughs> I don't know if y'all can relate, but yeah, I just, I'm in this. Like, I don't want to say bubble. I don't know. I'm in this cocoon of figuring out self-acceptance. And then speaking of that, he also, speaking of acceptance, he also talks about how if you're in, like, I guess, like, an undesirable situation, which this is, I feel, common knowledge, like, accept it fully and shut up about it. Or change it <laughs> and then the argument because the book is formatted in like a question answer thing and then the argument is that like oh well what if I can't change it and he's literally just like well just accept it fully and they, even that is hard because as a stay-at-home mom like there is days that I'm like dang like I miss getting up and have and going to work like I miss interacting with people even though when I'm in the situation I'll be like oh my god I can't wait to go home sometimes right as I'm sure a lot of people can relate but the accepting of the space that I am in now as a stay-at-home mom is like it is hard for me to accept sometimes it's definitely hard for me to accept sometimes but realistically what I'm working on um, not just accepting of circumstances, but just accepting of myself. Accepting myself as I am at this moment. Okay? And maybe I'll circle back to this in another video. But if you made it this far, thank you for rocking with me. Thank you for listening. If you can relate, I would love to hear your experiences. Um, or even if you read the book, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the book uh, down in the comment section. And I was about to apologize, but I'm not sorry. But I want to say thank you for sticking through this video, even though it's not necessarily, uh, oh, here's my 
list of advice for you because i do like to try to end my videos with something positive like some type of takeaway um but it's not always that okay i don't always have the answers even though i'm used to being the person in a lot of people's life that oh just go to bakia bakia knows bakia don't know everything okay <laughs> i do not have it all figured out i do not have the answers to everything so i guess this is that reminder to myself and to y'all you don't always have to have the answer but one of the best things that you can do for yourself is practice being present in your life practice accepting yourself as you are in this moment all right that's all i have for you hopefully next time it will be a little more structured um maybe a little more positive but this is where we are okay this is where we are today and that's okay anyways peace love y'all